All right, and we are now live running uh, two different trains. We got uh, a Tyco Century 630, is that the one? As well as the uh, Worcester locomotive. Just a couple freighters here. Anyways, it looks like we've already got uh, 14 people in here. Welcome everyone. I'll just uh, set it to live chat here. James, welcome. Matthew, hello. Prairie Rail fan. TMW Thomas, Slushy YT, welcome. Train Guy 5771. Whole bunch of people joining in right now. Anyways, uh, since my uh, last video where I uh, worked on the layout, I have made some uh, minor changes which I'll uh, quickly show you. Been uh, starting to kind of build up the road network. I've been trying to connect this road network, you know, from this layout to the other one for a long time now, and I think that I've finally come up with some kind of a solution. And uh, I think this is going to look okay. I obviously have to paint it up and everything, but, um, you know, it, it looks decent in my opinion. And you'll also see this cutout right here for my uh, future model of the uh, Forest Fair Mall. It's not going to be an exact replica by any means. I mean, building that was already a big enough project as it was, so it's going to be kind of like a section of the real thing. But uh, yeah, just sort of sorting out how much space I want to dedicate to that. And um, I mean, it's not going to be an exact copy of the real mall, but you can see right here uh, some rough plans I've made for the interior. It's going to be the one of the few buildings on my layout which is actually going to have a full-fledged interior with lighting and everything so the hershey factory was more focused on the exterior this is going to be more focused on the interior and i want to have a giant kind of dome skylight set up so you can actually look in and see all the little stores and stuff i haven't seen anybody do that in ho scale so i think that uh it's going to make a unique addition to the layout Wow, got a whole bunch of comments uh, coming in. We're up to 134 uh, viewers here. Um, you should do a temporary drag strip across the floor like Sam's Trains did at one time. A drag strip? And, uh, for like slot cars or uh, model trains? Can we see the Hershey factory? Yeah, sure. It hasn't uh, really changed much uh, since its completion. But I'm still happy with it, and uh, with this new link on the layout, it's going to be easier, you know, if I want to run trains up to the plant. Do you have any uh, KCS locomotives? Uh, I have one, uh, but it's it's packed away right now. I have to unbox it. Got a lifelike Atchison Topeka Santa Fe 040 for $10 US. Oh, that's not a bad deal. I think I have the uh, exact same unit. Not bad uh, locomotives. Uh, be sure to oil the gears well, though, because mine was uh, starting to strip out. I just spent two weeks in the hospital. You really made it a. You really have made a lot of changes while I was in there. Well, I hope you're doing well. Um, locos, could you even build your own speedy locomotive using whatever methods you could find? I mean, I could probably build like a band-driven locomotive. I'm sure that would be quick. Ricky M, welcome. Do you think you'll ever get a, a Magna Rail for traffic that moves? I wish I could. I've seen people do that on their layouts, and it's it's cool having functioning traffic. Um, I don't think it would work for my layout. It would. I mean, this is home so There's just so many different layers. You know, you'd have to rip everything up to build it. So. Um, I don't think I'll ever add that on my layout, but um, I wish I could. It would be nice. Do you like Lego trains? Uh, yeah, Lego trains are okay. Uh, they're not my favorite. I prefer model trains. I, I did have the uh, Horizon Express set from Lego years ago. I had a lot of fun building that, but uh, that's about as far as I took it. Is there any locomotives that you don't have? Well, at the moment, I'm uh, on the hunt for a uh, Chessy System GS4. I just found out those existed recently. Um, I won't name names just because uh, I don't know if they uh, want to be included, but uh, one of my subscribers reached out to me and said they found one, and uh, it looked really cool. So I've been uh, searching eBay to see if I can find a uh, replica. 
It, it was a genuine product from Bachman for a little while. Um, I think at some point in the 80s. Oh, looks like we got a uh, super chat here. Hi, SMT. What other additions would you like to add to the layout? Other additions to the layout. That's a good question. Um, I'm thinking about adding a small section of track off this new line just for uh, storing larger trains like the Shikansen and the uh, bi-level cars. Because I find all these these train sets, you know, they're tricky to take on and put put back on, especially during the live streams, but they take up a lot of space. So it'd be great if I could have like five dedicated tracks for larger trains, and then when they get requested, I could just bring them out onto the uh, main line. Oh, uh, one more thing too, uh, for the Super Chats now, I'm gonna try to start using this thing. So I blow the whistle every time a Super Chat comes in. Can you run the uh, B class later? Yeah, sure. Uh, speaking of uh, things happening later too, at uh, 10.40, um, I'm going to be premiering my uh, video of uh, going to New York, which actually includes the um, mystery box giveaway, which people have been asking about. So uh, stay tuned for that. Once I finish the live stream, it should be an automatic redirect. I haven't used that system before, so I don't know how that's going to work, but I'm going to try it. Uh, anyways, let me go find the uh, Australian locomotive here. Love the layout expansion. I'm very happy with it so far. Can you run the Wakefield train? And then there's another comment from somebody else can, saying, can you run the excursion train? So I'm assuming that's also for the Wakefield train. So got multiple people uh, requesting that. We can make it happen. Um, I'll, I'll put the two uh, cars on plus the uh, steam locomotive. How does that sound? Do you have any more Australian locomotives? Uh, not unboxed, but um, I mentioned in a previous live stream, I, I recently acquired a couple lots from Australia on eBay um, and a few individual items. So I think I'm going to do one video, which is going to be themed around unboxing Australian... Uh, locomotives and rolling stock. It should be fun. I'm just trying to think where uh, a good place to park this train would be. Maybe I'll try running it just off the main line. Good day, mate. Yeah, that's how I'll have to start that one instead of saying, well, folks. Whatever happened to your other Wakefield train cars, I feel like there was more... You're not wrong about that. Um, one of them lost a coupler, so I haven't been able to use it. And the other ones were German cars, which I kind of disguised to look like the Swedish cars. And um, I mean, they worked okay, but uh, I'm just not as big a fan of the look. And I added a ton of uh, drywall plaster to make them like to remold them a bit, which added weight. And I don't know, it was it was not a good idea on my part. So I still have them, but I, th I think I'm probably going to end up uh, selling those off and at some point, and then uh, I'll replace them with more genuine Swedish coaches. Oh, it looks like we got a uh, another super chat here. Let's have a look at that. Uh, TYR Studios, run the Athern SD70ACE. That must be the Conrail engine. Okay, I'll go get it. Gotta blow the whistle twice. I'm just gonna make sure the uh, Tyco locomotive isn't burning up in the tunnel over there. I heard it stop. I better not uh, forget those cars in the tunnel, otherwise I guarantee you by the end of the night I'll run a train down there and end up uh, running into them. Hey, SMT, I broke a Bachman Norfolk Western 611 with a cracked gear. Do you know anywhere I could get a replacement for the gear? They uh, sell replacements on eBay, uh, 3D printed copies. It's also possible Bachman sells replacements. I've uh, heard mixed things about both, but um, yeah, there, there, there are ways to find parts. 
And uh, got another super chat from Ozzy Gunzel. Uh, do you prefer double decker or single decker? Uh, double decker cars. I mean, there's nothing wrong with single level cars, but you know, bi level cars like they're pretty cool. And uh, from a practical standpoint too, like you're you're doubling the size of the train basically, without making it much larger, at least in terms of length. Um, I use my non-working engines as scrap parts. I put them in a small p spare parts bin. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Um, I, I usually, you know, aim to fix every engine that I get. But this is kind of like my, my basic rule for, um, you know, when to part a locomotive out. If more than half of it is gone, I think at that point... You know, it's it's not unreasonable to uh, to part it out. There have been exceptions, like the Yellowstone was, I don't know, maybe 20% there. It was missing a ton of parts, but that was a really cool piece, so I didn't want to part that out. But uh, yeah, there have been some junkier engines where you can put the parts towards other things. SMT, remember that one Bachman Union Pacific Centennial with soundboards and a blinking light? Can you run that one? Yeah, I can run that. Let me just... Uh, catch up on some of these requests first. I actually did some work on that about a, probably about a, I don't know, a year ago. Got another uh, super chat from KM88. Uh, can you run the 8060M? That must be the Mac. Sure, I'll, uh, I'll try my best here. Let me just uh, get the Wakefield train running. Do you consider running your DD40? Well, somebody just requested one, so I don't see why not. Not derail it. Okay, there we go. Wakefield train is a uh, is a go. Farming Legos and trains. That's a cool channel name. Uh, thanks for giving me the idea to build a six by eight layout. Well, uh, no problem. Uh oh. Seems like the uh, Wakefield train's having problems. Hey, SMT, I'm thinking about buying a steam locomotive for display or just to have a model or a real one. I don't know why that jumped the track, but anyways. Electric Railway Productions, uh, Shapeways has gears for old Bachman trains. Bachman does not have them anymore. Okay, that's uh, that's good to know. Thank you uh, for the uh, super chat. Let's get that. I think there was three. You know how earlier I said I would somehow accidentally run a train into those cars? <laughs> that almost happened sooner rather than later. Hey, SMT, huge fan of the channel. Uh, love your videos. Sorry, let me just get this switch before it runs around. Um, especially your layout slash upgrade videos. I prefer watching your layout videos while eating... Uh, while eating any day over streaming Netflix. Oh, that's, uh, that's quite a compliment. Thank you. The, uh, the layout videos are fun. Um, I'm going to start another layout series pretty soon. Um, my uh, One of my buddies uh, has a son, and uh, I offered to build a, a layout for him. Uh, he lives in an apartment, so the next video series is actually going to be on uh, building a uh, layout for compact spaces, which I think is going to be interesting. But uh, working on this layout is kind of fun, too. I think in the previous video I mentioned it's almost like an old mill. Like, it's had addition, 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 addition which uh, adds its challenges, but working around that stuff is kind of cool, like tearing things up. It's, it's like doing, you know, real renovations. And uh, Jackson Brunson Jr., uh, my son Jackson says, we have jerseys for you. Okay, well, thanks for the uh, super chat. Um, hey, SMT, have you heard of the Thunderbolt Express set from Mahano? I feel like I have. Um, was it one of the uh, President's Choice sets? 
you could start a layout company. I've thought about that. Um, yeah, I don't know. See if I can uh, get better at building these things a bit faster. I've been uh, just thinking of all sorts of different designs, though, you know, how to kind of optimize space. And uh, there, there are a couple uh, layouts which I really want to try building. Got any Detroit-based stuff? GTW doesn't count. Sorry. Well, I'm, I'm sure in terms of cars, I got some Detroit stuff. I got a few Chevy Caprices. I'm guessing those were probably made in Detroit or somewhere around there. Uh, how can you run trains without having them being... How far can you make a train without... Well, you could build a train that would fill the entire circle. It, it might have issues, but uh, I've done that before. What's the best way to put down a telephone pole without a base if you don't put foam down before the grass? Uh, just drill a hole in whatever uh, material you're using, and uh, if you really need to, put a bit of hot glue in the uh, hole before you put the pole in, and should be good. Where's the Tyco SMT? The one in the thumbnail? I just stopped it for a while, but uh, I was running that earlier. Anyways, I think I'm going to take this off the main line. I don't know why this has been having so many issues with this part of the layout, but we'll uh, run something else here. Norman Corey, I'm boxing up some stuff to send right your way, including a couple of motors and some custom drive shafts. Thank you so much, uh, Norman. I really do uh, appreciate that. Have you heard of the uh, Hinton train clash? Uh, yeah, I have heard of that uh, accident. There are some uh, videos online about it. Snowy Mountain Pass. Hey Harrison, how are you with consolidations from Bachman? And I've also been subscribed for two years. Well, thanks for uh, sticking around. Uh, in terms of working on Bachman consolidations, uh, I got my father's one running, but I bought an identical model out of Train Show, which I ended up trashing. Um, it, it had the same binding issue as they all do. And uh, when I was working on it, the drivers just popped off and uh, they had stripped the threads. So I ended up scrapping that. But the parts luckily went into the GS4 Bachman. So it wasn't a waste. It wasn't for nothing. But uh, yeah, they are tricky to work on. Hey, SMT, do you have a community access television station in your town? I'm sure Gatineau does, but uh, it, it's, it's probably French. Have you got the silver play button yet? Yeah, it's, uh, it's right there. They should restore it and run it on the main line. Yeah, top idea. Can you run your Brazilian locomotive? Maybe in a moment here, I've got a few requests I need to uh, catch up on. The first one being this. Let that run through its uh, startup procedure here. Have you ever decided to repaint the cursed hodgepodge locomotive or keep it as is? I think I'm going to uh, repaint it as a Western Maryland locomotive. I don't know if I'll make a video about that, but I might put together a, uh, a YouTube short on repainting it. Uh, let's see if I can get this thing to run. I'll be honest, this uh, engine is a little bit picky with uh, my track work. I don't even remember if I've run it over the new section, so we'll see how that performs. Can we have a closer look at the play button? Yeah, sure. I ju actually just took this out of its uh, box yesterday. Um, in the light, it's kind of hard to see. So you can kind of see it at that angle right there. But um, yeah, just wild.
Western and Maryland scheme would look exceptional. Well, and they, they have a locomotive which had the same wheel configuration. It, it actually looks very similar. If I'd known this locomotive existed, I actually would have modeled it after that right from the beginning. But um, it's not too late, you know, throw some uh, matte finished black paint on it, get some decals and, you know, it might be interesting. It's kind of funny because, you know, most people try to turn things that are normal into uh, steampunk stuff. And this is going to be taking something which is steampunk and turning it back into a normal locomotive. What's the, what model is the tractor outside the barn? I don't know what model it is. It's uh, some kind of John Deere, I believe. That is a John Deere. Unpunk your steam. Uh-oh. I don't know why this engine uh, shorts on certain switches. Hey Harrison, I was last. I was in the last live stream. I'm in Colorado. Can you run a Centennial? I also might be getting another locomotive in the near future. That's now the uh, third request for the Centennial. So yeah, sure, I'll uh, run the Australian locomotive first because that was on the uh, queue before that. But uh, yeah. Thank you uh, so much for the uh, Super Chat Jackson. It's a John Deere 4020 diesel, okay. I got a DCC sound, Chesapeake in Ohio, 2882 Mallard at the Great Model Train Show for $130. Been looking for one for a long time, so it was an exceptional deal. There are some on, some on eBay for $350, always looking for good deals. Well, uh, yeah, that's that's great to hear. Um, yeah, it can be uh, tricky to, to find, especially the larger steam locomotives on eBay seem to uh, go for quite a pretty penny. I think they're just quite... Uh, sought after but yeah sometimes at a train show you just get somebody and they're, they just want to get rid of something and uh yeah you can take it away for nothing i'm actually planning on doing a video on um you know where to find model trains soon and i i, I want to break it down based on you know price availability and uh Price availability and honesty, those are kind of like the, the key points I want to have in this video. But I wanted to ask all of you, because in my opinion, train shows are usually where the good deals are at. But uh, where have you, both, well, when you've bought something, where has it, you know, where have the good deals been? You know, just in everyone's experience. I'd, uh, I'd love to hear it, just because uh, I find train shows are usually the deal. But, uh, you know, there are way more places than just train shows to find models for sale. I tell you what, I've been watching your train for over a year now. Keep up the good work and train videos. Thank you. Is Bachman good? They're okay. Um, they're not my favorite brand. I find that they're overpriced for what you get, and uh, I've had some quality control issues with them. Uh, but they've, they have made improvements, like the old Bachman engines. If you're looking for something that runs well and is reliable, I would just avoid those. They're not quality engines by any means uh, but their their new stuff is decent i got a proto 2000 steam locomotive for 175 canadian in perfect condition that seems like a good deal you 
do you have or have you seen the GM Aero Train? I don't have any models of the uh, Aero Train, but I am aware of it. It's uh, something I would like to buy at some point. What got you into trains, SMT? I was, uh, well, as far back as I can remember, I've liked trains, and I think that that was mostly because my grandfather uh, had a place uh, down by the river uh, where there used to be a tourist railroad in a town called Chelsea, and every weekend, uh, me and my dad, we'd go up there, and I'd watch Gilligan's Island while they would drink coffee, and we would wait for the train, we'd hear the whistle, and we'd run down to the tracks and well before I could even walk there just carrying me down to see the train so I think just growing up you know seeing a train every weekend probably played a role in it but I really like uh, mechanical things in general you know I like boats I like cars uh, I find it fascinating to figure out how things work please read if you missed this I got a pen line Pennsylvania I won Mikado and the drive was so stiff. I did some work and it now runs perfectly. I'm proud of myself. Well, you, yeah, well, you should be. That's uh, that's great. I mean, the first time you get anything working right, uh, the, the feeling of satisfaction is terrific. Can you run the Shikansen if it's not too much trouble? Uh, we could run it later on, but uh, there are some other requests in the queue which I want to uh, get around to first. The reason I got a good deal was because some guy had moved the headlight and one of the employees at the store misidentified it. Well, that was lucky. Hey, Harrison, I have a GS4 American Freedom train. Just wondering if you could repair it for a video. I would also want it back. Uh, I don't do repairs that involve a shipment anymore. I was having a lot of problems with that, um, but I'm happy to give you any advice you need on repairing it. My guess would be if it's having problems, I mean, you haven't mentioned what the issue is, but my guess would be it's got the uh, binding problem, which I'm slowly doing more research on uh, fixing and uh, I'm gonna make more content on how to uh, get those going again. Uh, Jackson is wondering if you think Lionel HO trains are any good. Well, it kind of depends. Uh, Lionel has been in and out of uh, HO scale many times. So their first release in the 50s, those were great. They were rebadged River Aussie locomotives. So those were pretty, pretty decent. Uh, their second generation was actually a house brand and uh, those were okay. They were uh, made in Michigan and uh, they had quality motors, um, a die cast chassis. The shells were kind of cheap and uh, the drive shafts had problems, but they were decent. Uh, their third generations were Kadar locomotives, so they were basically just rebadged Bachmann engines. Those were junk. They were just as bad as the Bachmann engines of the same time. Um, now, as for their recent, uh, you know, 2018 to, I think, last year release of HO stuff, it's okay. Um, they put good wheels on it. They put some decent parts, but a lot of it was just reused uh, dies, which they've had for you know 50 years so they weren't junk but they definitely cut a lot of cor corners in their new release the detail was not good Harrison do you think that they will make a model maglev train in the future I feel like it's possible but I I, I doubt they would make a working model if that makes sense so they might make a maglev train which looks like it's floating but actually is running on a rail or something because I feel like trying to make a model of uh, a real maglev train would be very complicated. Hey Harrison, what's your recommendation for getting an MP15AC? I want to get one in the C uh, CSX, but Athern is the only one that has it. I run on DCC and sound. Is it better to get a different one? Deca. I feel like uh, the Athern ones would be fine. Hey, SMT, what BNSF locomotives do you have? I've got uh, a Dash 9, some sort of a Mac. I can't remember what kind. 
a GP15-1, and then I think a GP38. Anyways, just as promised, here's the uh, Bachman. I'm just gonna quickly uh, switch this over to DC so I don't fry it. I bought some trains at a flea market once or twice. I was gonna mention uh, flea markets in the video, flea markets and antique stores. I find they can be uh, mixed because I find sometimes you get people at uh, antique shops and they think that whatever model train they're selling is a toy and they sell it for a good price. But you also get the other people who think that they're selling a, a high quality model when it's an old Tyco and they're, you know, trying to get top dollar for that. So getting back into trains after several decades ago, I have lots of mostly Tyco stuff coming from eBay. What do you use to clean the tracks and also how do you clean old lubricant and grease off of parts? Okay, uh, for track, especially if you're using old Tyco track, I would probably get yourself a, um, a track rubber or a track bright. You can find these at hobby shops. Pico sells them. And uh, that will scrape oxidization off the rails, which is important if the track has been sitting for a while. Uh, as for um, as for cleaning uh, lubricant off of stuff, uh, plastic parts can be washed with water. So you can just take those off. You can get some warm soapy water, some dish liquid, and just scrub them with a toothbrush. Uh, and you can do that a little bit with some metal parts. Just don't do it on the motor or any of the electrical components. And uh, that usually gets the job done. Otherwise, just uh, you, if it's just a bit of oil that's tacky, just put some rubbing alcohol on it and uh, scrub it down. And it looks like we got a, a super chat from... Um, it's disappeared let me find it here connecticut valley rail films and uh, they're asking me to triple head uh, some steam locomotives i don't think that that's going to work but i will run three steam locomotives at the same time because uh, i don't want to disappoint i have to try to find three which will hopefully be roughly speed matched let's have a look That Bachman engine is uh, just struggling. If you have DCC, you could speed match. I have DCC, I just don't have uh, that many DCC steam engines, or at least any that run that well together. I'm just looking at if uh, I got the Mahano 6060. If I can find my two Mahano steamers, steam pieces, I, I think that we could probably. Uh, run those all together. Hey SMT, I got my second ever Atherin blue box and it's in my shop area right now. The front truck dismantled, it runs, but the Cato track prevents it from running further when it has its shell on. It sounds like something's wrong there. I checked the uh, side covers to make sure they're not loose. It should should be fine. All right, found the two 10 twos. Uh, recommendations for a Bachman, uh, decoder for a Bachman Niagara. I'm assuming it's uh, DCC ready. If it's a modern Bachman, it probably is. So, uh, Gee, what would be good? I can't remember the type of decoder I use. I don't do a lot of decoder installs. If uh, anybody in the chat has a uh, suggestion for uh, a good decoder, uh, please throw it in there. But uh, most decoders have uh, an 8-pin socket, and Bachman engines use an 8-pin socket. So any decoder which uh, uses an 8-pin uh, you know, plug should be okay. Uh, 
soundtracks. What's a good transformer for a beginner? Any uh, modern DC controllers is pretty good for a beginner. I wouldn't necessarily recommend the super old uh, DC controllers. They strike me as a little dangerous, but um, yeah, most modern uh, basic DC controllers are adequate to get you started. All right, so there's one down. Hey, Harrison, I've got some Bachman track. I'm having trouble cleaning it. Do you have any ideas? Well, as I said, if you can uh, buy yourself a track uh, rubber, those are usually quite helpful. All right, two down. Hey Harrison, could you please run your Lehigh Valley locomotive? I don't know where it is right now, to be honest. All right, there we go, all three. SMD, how did you build your crossing and have the rails still run over? Well, uh, I just took uh, drywall plaster and I cut little spaces for the flanges. Uh, another technique which works is just using uh, gray uh, construction paper. I find that, you know, it's pretty simple and doesn't cause too many issues. That's what I did on the most recent layout. The front truck on that is derailed. It's either going to re-rail itself or derail in some catastrophe. that let's see what's going on here okay there we go how many DCC sound locomotives do you have probably about uh, 15 huh that same uh, truck has derailed again how do you feel about custom built locomotives and equipment? I think uh, it's really cool. It's uh, kind of brave to build something from scratch. It's not easy. Building stuff from a kit can uh, even present certain challenges too. Anyways, I'll take this one off because uh, it keeps derailing for some reason. What do you think was your most uh, challenging repair until now? I've had a few, but I think the one that comes to mind is the RS3, the Canadian National one, which I built. Um, I did a video about a year ago on this thing, and uh, it was so much trouble, I almost gave up on it twice. Uh, it had a lot of problems. It, it was a poorly, it was a kit that somebody had built, and they had built it wrong, and then the locomotive sat for probably 50 years and all the lubricants dried out and the parts rusted and 
Uh, it had a bad coat of paint and stuff. Everything that could be wrong was wrong with that locomotive. So it took a long time just to get it like unseized and moving. And I had to pretty much go through every single part on that locomotive and clean it out, relubricate it. Now, I find the majority of uh, locomotives, usually you give them some voltage, clean them out, throw some lubricant in there. That, that gets them going. But uh, once in a while, you get that odd one that has just problems on top of problems. Hey, SMT, do you think I should try to fix up that Atherin Blue Box locomotive that can't run with the shell, or should I turn it into a dummy? It's an SD40-2. Well, if the locomotive is not running um, with the shell, uh, turning it into a dummy isn't really going to benefit you because, you know, if, if it's the shell causing problems, it's going to continue with it being a dummy engine. So I would just see, like, what about the shell is causing problems with the track? Is it hanging too low? Is it on the engine right? That that can be a problem if it's not secured to the uh, chassis right. Maybe part of it's not in the right spot. Have you ever been to Colorado? One of my uh, one of the first Na NASA astronauts is from there. Uh, I've never been to Colorado. Uh, it's a place I would like to visit at some point in my life. Riverasi slash Hornby released a new 4014 Big Boy DCC in sound. It's awesome. I'll have to think about uh, ordering one of those up. It would be cool to do a video comparing uh, a current River Rossi locomotive to uh, one of their earlier releases. Is that an MRC uh, Tech 3? Sure is. Best uh, DC controller money can buy. I have a friend who does 3D printing modeling, and I was toying with the idea of trying to do some H of scale White Star line passenger cars. What do you think? That's a cool idea. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming uh, the White Star Line didn't have any trains, but I mean, I, I feel like you could transfer over the, the same paint schemes that they used to put on their boats to uh, rail cars, and, and I bet it would look quite nice. I can't really explain it to you, but the cattle track prevents it from running, and the locomotive stops getting power whenever something is detected, so I'm assuming it's electrical. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's a, a short circuit. Pisces, my seas. Hey, it's uh, Rail Rider Ravy. I haven't seen uh, you in a while. Hard to beat good old DC. That's true. That's true. I mean, DCC does have its advantages, but the simplicity of DC is just so nice. It's cheaper. You just throw your trains on the track, you feed them some voltage, boom, they work. No messing around with, uh, you know, programming decoders, wiring decoders in, burning decoders out. They are uh, a lot less picky, that's for sure. So we got another super chat. My youngest son wonders, what is the hardest part of model railroading? Probably uh, troubleshooting. I mean, you know, when, when something's not acting right, it could be a million different reasons and you got to kind of do different tests and figure out what the problem could be and then figure out a solution for the problem. Uh, it can be uh, very rewarding if you fix it, but, uh, you know, there have been some times where I've been pulling my hair out trying to fix something, uh, a piece of track or a certain locomotive. They're having derailments for no reason. <laughs> I wish there was more teenagers like me that are interested in the hobby. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not the most, uh, you know, common uh, hobby of this generation, but there are people out there, like, you know, I had no idea. You know, there were guys my age uh, in the hobby, like, locally, and then, you know, I joined a train club and met, you know, three people who I ended up becoming uh, friends with. And uh, luckily with YouTube and uh, forums and things like that as well, there's definitely, I think, more of a sense of community. I, you know, at one point, you know, if you were model railroading in the 80s, you know, if you were lucky, maybe you'd be part of a train club. But if you were in a remote place, you wouldn't have that advantage. So, you know, at least uh, there are other people, you know, who kind of think the same way you can chat with. And I think uh, I think it's a huge advantage. 
Can you show us the Tyco Santa Fe C630 uh, up close? I want to see what you've done since the repair video. Yeah, sure. I, I was hoping somebody would ask that because I was actually doing some work on it today. Not good work, but it's, uh, it's looking the best it probably has. So I had a, uh, a junk EMD shell I was going to throw out, so I decided to take the front steps off that, got it all glued on there. So at least uh, there's actually something here. I glued a junk coupler on that because that was also going to get thrown out. Actually, that's a good coupler. I shouldn't have done that. But uh, anyways, got a coupler on it, took some uh, handrails, so slowly been building it up. And then uh, I mentioned in a previous live stream that, you know, I have a really cheap technique for weathering. Just give them a little spritz of matte finish spray paint. And, uh, you know, it's not as good as a an actual weathering job that some people do. But uh, I feel like it actually looks kind of realistic. It's sort of a 50-50 model. It, it looks great from 50 feet away or going 50 miles an hour. Good evening, Harrison. Here to ask if you could run some trains on the mountain part of the layout that you fixed. Sure. I was also hoping somebody would ask that. It's uh, put together, well, there's already some cars in that mountain, so I think a good idea would be to send a locomotive back there, try to retrieve those cars, and then we can uh, run them down that circuit. Very nice weathering. It definitely uh, looks better. I mean, um, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, I, I did a video, I think it was... One of my buying shady model trains off eBay, and uh, this was part of a lot, which I outbid everybody on. And uh, this thing is probably, when I first got it, not worth more than $5. Um, it was completely junked. Somebody had tried to fix one of the, the gears had cracked in it, and they had tried to glue them back together, and they had done a pretty bad job. Um, so... Yeah, I put this back together. And I remember when I made a video about fixing this thing, there were so many people being like, SMT, why do you waste your time fixing up this junk? And frankly, you know, I love working on this kind of stuff, so I, I don't feel bad uh, for the time I've invested in it. But uh, I think it's kind of funny that bit by bit, it's actually starting to, you know, turn into something. It's not good, but it's also not bad. Can you do a backflip? No way. <laughs> I wish I could. That would be cool. Mike Merritt's welcome. I'm trying to think of the best way to retrieve those cars. Hey, SMT, I have to get some lubricants because I've never lubricated any of my older locomotives, which is a Walters GP15. How often should I lubricate more modern locomotives? Um, I, I mean, it's a good idea in the long term to, you know, maybe lubricate them like once a year, once every two years. But like to tell you the truth, most modern locomotives don't they don't need that much oil especially if they're running correctly um older engines with metal gears you've got to keep on top of oiling them because if you don't you know the failure is going to come pretty quick but on modern engines which have low friction plastic gears yeah, there are some engines i haven't lubricated in five years and they're still running fine you know not that that's a good thing for them but um you know, if, if the engines you're, you have are, are running fine and you're not putting crazy hours on them, you don't need to do oil changes like crazy. Have you ever repaired a Penline locomotive? Yes, I had a, a Whitcomb switcher I found at a train show for five bucks and uh, I, that was completely junked when I got it, so I did some repairs. I have a video working on that locomotive but it's one of my uh, older ones so you know i didn't know as much about fixing things and the quality is not as good that's for sure smt i went to a train show recently and i found an sd7 proto engine uh, running for 25 dollars is that a steal for uh, two running Proto SD7s? Yeah, that sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Hey, 
Any tips for making mountains on my model railroad? Um, the question I have, should I fill it up with putty or self-expanding foam or leave them hollow and patch them on top? I'm afraid it will be structurally weak. Well, if you're, if you're, these mountains are approaching five years old and they were only made using cardboard, hot glue and um, paper. And, and frankly, with the glue, the structure is sound enough and nothing's happened to these mountains. So I'm not too worried about the structure, but if you really want to make sure that they won't go anywhere, uh, just spray a bit of expanding foam and uh, you're never going to have a problem with them. I don't know if putting a putty over the top would be a good idea because I don't think a putty would be as forgiving if there was an, like you drop something on the mountain. Because the cardboard will just pop back into place, but if you put putty there, it might crack. Whereas if you put expanding foam, it will also be a bit more forgiving. All right, let's see if we can go retrieve those cars. Something's still derailed. Okay, I think I got it that time. Could you run a bicentennial unit? Like the uh, Spirit of 76? Oh, looks like got another super chat here. Would you mind shouting out my son, Blair? Fellow train shoes. Yeah, hi, Blair. I've bought two F40PHs in a small hobby place in Austin. I bought both of them in a Ziploc bag for $60. It said they didn't run, but when I went home, I realized the gears were full of carpet hairs. Yeah, that's a pretty common problem. I've seen that a lot, especially with the uh, kind of starter set type locomotives like the old Tycos. Um, I think what happened was, you know, a lot of people got these sets and they... Uh, I forgot to flip that switch over there. A lot of people got these switch and they... Uh, a lot of people got these sets. They set them up on the floor over carpet and then the trains just ran for hours and hours picking up carpet fibers the whole way. What should I do uh, if my tracks keep coming apart? If the tracks keep uh, splitting, you could try uh, adding a bit of CA under the rails, like some crazy glue, but I don't know. Most of the time when I've had problems with uh, the tracks separating from the ties, I just replace it because, I don't know. I, I've, w once, you, once you break the, uh, the little plastic spikes, uh, they're, they're, they're pretty tricky to get back on. Are 80s Atlas trains any good? Well, I mean, compared to their modern stuff, um, they're not. But uh, in, in general, yeah, I'd say they are good. They're su super reliable, and they got a good reputation in the community. I've got a couple of really old uh, Atlas locomotives, and uh, they're solid. Hey Harrison, what are those parts in between the steam trains from Bachman? In between the steam trains from Bachman. I'm uh, not sure I understand the question. 
Harrison, do you ever plan on joining a model railroad club if there's any near you? Well, uh, I am part of one and, and technically part of another. And uh, I go over there every once in a while. Uh, one of the train clubs, uh, I don't film or... I, I could probably do a live stream there, but they're just... Um, it's, uh, it's a very small club. They've got limited space, and so they can't really uh, fit any more members. So they don't really want me... Uh, you know, over promoting the club because they're worried that they're going to get overwhelmed. Um, and uh, the other train club I'm, well, kind of part of, kind of not, uh, they had a lot of rules and stuff. You had to go through a whole, like, training uh, process in order to learn how to drive a model train and operations, so on and so forth. And uh, I forgot to flip that switch again. Well, I've, I've really got a case of the stupids today. Um... <laughs> That's going to fall off the table, I guarantee you. Uh-oh. Yeah, maybe I do need that club training on how to run a model train. Yeah, so this other club uh, has, uh, they had a whole tutorial, and I frankly, I just didn't have the time, you know? It was like I was burning a half hour getting to the club, and then uh, getting there, and... Apparently there was also a bit of trash talking about me not showing up or something. The, the whole thing was kind of silly. Have you ever watched the movie Unstoppable? I saw Unstoppable when it uh, came out in theaters. Excellent film. Can you run the uh, Go Train? Yeah, sure. I mean, in between the wheels. Oh yeah, those are uh, those are the axles, nylon axles. You might be talking about the plastic axle joiners. Yeah, you were uh, right, Norm. Matchbox slash Hot Wheels are typically one in sixty fourth scale. Ho is one in eighty seventh. So Matchbox cars are a little on the larger side. Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of people who use Matchbox cars and Hot Wheels on their layout, and you know, I'm not judging because, you know, it's your layout, do whatever you want, but I personally uh, don't find that they, they look quite right. Um, in a natural scene, like with mountains and stuff, you could probably get away with it because the uh, scale of the mountains is a little more va variable, but when you put them beside a building, something looks a little little off. Harrison, what is your favorite road and opinion on CSX? Also, do you like the saxophone? Yeah, the saxophone's cool. Um, Careless Whisper would not be the same without it. And uh, as far as... Uh, I think the comment got deleted. Oh, no, here it is. Um, favorite road, uh, I think it'd be uh, Canadian National and uh, opinions on CSX. It's uh, it's an okay railroad. Their paint schemes are all right. Um, that's about all I think about them. Do you mind trying to recreate the train that derailed in East Palestine? I, I don't think that uh, that would be in the best taste. Hey Harrison, can you tell me why my HO scale Kansas Durango engine won't run the light? The engine runs, but it won't drive. It sounds like you, the drive shaft has either broken or it's popped out of place. Unless, uh, maybe, maybe it's one of the old Tyco engines. Um, yeah, if it's an old Tyco engine, inside the drive there's a little metal gear, the pivot gear, which is at the top. And, and sometimes those just kind of work their way out of place. So if you if you pull the drive out, and you push it back into place, and then you put a tiny dab of um, crazy glue on the outside. Sometimes you can fix them like that. Hi, Harrison. Very new to the channel, but uh, loving it. Do you have any rules for DCC wiring? It seems like everyone has their own methods. Uh, 
Not, not really, to be honest with you. I'm uh, no expert on uh, DCC. I've done a few DCC installs before, but uh, I wouldn't know enough about it, I don't think, to have any serious advice. The only thing I know is that if you're working on an old model, you have to replace... It's a good idea to replace the wheels with um, nickel silver ones. And uh, this is not information for me, but uh, there's this guy... Uh, Rajan, who works at uh, the local train store, and he is a DCC expert, so he's taught me some stuff, but uh, yeah, I don't know enough to, to really say. I was wondering if you have any history with modern River Rossi big boys. I have a problem with mine, and it hasn't been very fun. Well, I'm uh, sorry to hear that. I've never uh, disassembled one. Uh, I, I think I own one. I'm pretty sure the... Uh, that is one of them, but, uh, yeah, I've never actually opened one before. If you want to send me an email, though, on what's going on with it, I'll, uh, try to help you anyway. Do you have any Class 9 F locomotives? If so, can you run one? I don't think I do. Exoid, hey SMT, nice to see you're still streaming every so often. You have quite a bit of a following now. Great to see someone that encourages people to open and repair their trains. Thank you. I'm glad to, to see you're still hanging around here too. Uh, Exoid was uh, a pretty early subscriber of the channel as I remember. Rajan, isn't he from Hobby House? Yeah, that's the guy. That's the guy. He's ridiculously uh, talented with DCC. He He'll, he'll wire just about everything. He, he put like a smokestack on a locomotive and um, he somehow wired an LED and added a flickering effect. So when you uh, turned up the throttle, it would look like stuff was burning out the exhaust. And um, he managed to add DCC and sound to a uh, maintenance of the way vehicle, like one of those little vans. It's really, really crazy stuff. Is there an HO scale 3D print intermodal car on things first? I'm planning to print one. Oh, there is one. Okay, well, that's that's good to know. I ordered a 3D printer. I'm going to be getting into that soon, so I'm pretty excited about that. What do you think about the Australian streamlined 3801? Uh, I, th I think that that's a steam locomotive, and uh, I might have got one in a lot recently. I don't know very much about it as a, a real locomotive, though. Hey, SMT, you actually inspired me to start dismantling the locomotives a lot more. I started taking this hobby more seriously in early 2023, and it's been a lot better ever since. I've made a lot of repairs. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Um, I know it, uh, it can be a little spooky the first time digging into a locomotive, but uh, once you succeed the first time, it's uh, it's pretty exciting. I want to make some uh, more videos too on this general advice for tackling locomotives because, you know, uh, there were many times when I was younger I'd open something and it would fail to, uh, you know, get it working. I'd feel very discouraged and that's totally normal, but, you know, I didn't know that at the time. So I'd love to make more videos on just how to you know, do general maintenance on locomotives and, and how to crack things open. If anybody, by the way, ever wants to get into uh, repairing locomotives, um, buy yourself a junky old lifelike or something. It's always good to practice on something you don't really care about because when I was younger, I was working on engines I actually did care about and I never really messed anything up so bad I wasn't able to undo it, but there were some close calls. Do you have a River Rossi Mikado? One of the ones with the old motors in the cab. Um, I've got a bunch of old River Rossies with the uh, motor located in the cab, but I don't think I have a Mikado version. I did, however, uh, manage to get my Athern uh, Mikado running again, though. That was just uh, terrible. Have you ever heard of the Blue Comet? I have uh, heard of that, yeah.
Do you have an eBay account? Uh, I don't sell anything on eBay. I have like an account to uh, buy stuff. Do you have any Texas Special Diesel locomotives? I don't think I do. Any tips on restorations? Well, I mean, I, there's a million different things I could say, but I, I think the, the best thing for working on just about anything is always use brute force as a last resort. You know, if you're trying to disassemble something and it's not coming apart, there's usually a tab or a screw or something that you've missed. And it, it's always worth kind of taking your time and examining something, seeing how it comes apart. Because I find whenever you re revert, you know, resort to brute force to take something apart, things end up getting broken. I mean, once in a while you have to. Sometimes you have a clip that's stuck or uh, a screw which is just stiff. But yeah, that's uh, probably my number one piece of advice for even uh, working on things which are not model trains for taking apart anything. Do you have an LRC? Yeah, I do. Try to run it. Hello, SMT. I'm 15, and I want to. I want a nice locomotive in my budget. It's $170. What would be the best brand to buy from? For a good steam engine, uh, for 170, I would look for old uh, IHC slash Mahano locomotives. You can. You, you might even be able to find two for that price, and uh, the detail on them is decent. And uh, they run forever. They're very low-maintenance steam engines. Some of the most reliable I've ever seen. So, uh, yeah, just search for the old Mahano engines, and I don't think you'll uh, be disappointed. Hey, SMT, I blew a capacitor on a decoder because I ran it on DC accidentally. Would it be possible to replace the uh, cap post? I've never done anything like that. Um, I mean, if you can find the same capacitor, maybe. I, yeah, I, I'm kind of the wrong person to ask for that. Maybe some other people would know. If you're taking apart a steam locomotive, take pictures as you go in case you forget where stuff goes. Yeah, yeah, it can help to uh, take pictures of things. I haven't had that problem because most of the time when I'm, you know, disassembling it, I'm... Uh, taking a video so if i screw up something bad and I, I need to figure out how it went back together i can just watch the footage but i mean that's basically the same thing opinion on vintage locomotive kits they can be fun to put together but uh i find a lot of kits you do have to be uh, very careful with i built a kit a couple years ago and uh, the engine runs okay but um i mean there's a lot of different steps things can be warped you can have to sand uh, down flashing there's uh, this guy on YouTube, uh, I highly recommend everybody checks out his channel. He's called Darth Santa Fe, and he does a lot of uh, kit builds. And uh, he's a guy who knows a lot about building uh, kit locomotives, but it also kind of shows all the different things you need to watch out for to build a kit locomotive and actually do it right. Would you ever want to run real water under the bridges i've i've thought about building some sort of a, a running water system but i feel like that would end badly what is the most affordable detailed model train company I think that uh, Walter's train line is probably the best blend of uh, affordability and uh, detail. After that, maybe Cato. A lot of Cato uh, locomotives, though, you have to decorate yourself. So, I mean, that, that you get a discount, but they do cost a little more. But I feel like both those will not disappoint. Hey, SMT, are there any layouts that you want to see in person? One of my favorites is the... Uh, Tech uh, Sheppy, I'm definitely not getting that right. Uh, layout slash Goat Canyon Trestle. Can you run a modern DD40? I already ran a DD40, but uh, 
I'll, I'll run a modern one because because uh, it's a super chat. Um, any layouts I'd want to see. What I would really love to see is a working layout from the 50s. And I'm not talking about a layout that's modeled after the 1950s, an actual layout from the 1940s or 50s still in working order or even not in working order. Because uh, I've, I've found pictures of really, um, you know, old layouts from back then and, uh, you know, like old tricks twin railway layouts. And, and I think that stuff's cool, but I've never actually seen a, a full one. And I feel like most of those layouts, you know, there's a lot of locomotives from the 40s and 50s around, but not many layouts. So it'd be really cool just to see, you know, a layout from back in the day and what kind of track they used and, you know, how it worked. What's your favorite song? Uh, probably uh, Elevator by Aerosmith. We'll uh, grab the LRC as well here. Does the crossing in the background actually work? It lights up, but it doesn't flash. Um, others have suggested that I get a, a uh, not a horn relay, a, uh, a blinker relay. Sorry, the Regency stuff is getting into my brain. Um, yeah, getting some uh, blinker relays and wiring that up, which might make it work. It runs off 12 volts, so I'll have to figure that out at some point. Can you run a Canadian Pacific locomotive? It doesn't matter what kind. Sure, let me just run the uh, LRC and uh, Centennial first. Yeah, some tea. I live in New York City, and there have been trains there such as subways, Metro North, Long Island Railroad, and Amtrak. That's uh, that's cool. You might want to stay tuned for the uh, premiere later because it's in your town. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts of Proto 2000 Diesel and Steam? They're uh, decent. Their earlier releases do have some problems. Um, I can't really speak for their steam engines. I don't really own uh, Proto 2000 steam, or at least not a lot. Uh, but as for their diesels, they're you know they're basically rip off Atherton engines. Like they 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 stole Atherton's design, um, which wasn't a bad thing because the Atherton design is really good. And then they added more detail, so it looks wise. They're great. Uh, the only problem is that they used uh, crappier gears, and over time they split, which causes a lot of issues. It can actually cause them a short circuit because the wheels um, touch each other, which isn't good. But uh, other than that, they're pretty good. Um, that's the only problem I've seen them have. All that, I also got some proto subway cars, which were seized right out of the box. But other than that, they're, uh, they're, they're pretty well made. Proto engines are pretty good, and the new ones are actually DCC ready. I'm glad they uh, added that. I was a little bit surprised that the uh, Walters trainline locomotives were not DCC ready. Like, it just seems weird to me to make a modern locomotive with LED lights and a circuit board, diodes, you know, everything there, but not put a little chip in the board to make it DCC ready. I'm sure it'd be, you know... Not incredibly complicated to wire a decoder into one, but they could have just made it so much easier if they had just changed that. The split gear would not cause a short. The wheels are only short if the wheels are pressed too tightly together. Yeah, kind of, but the wheels won't touch each other if they're secure in place, and if the if the gear splits, the wheels can touch each other. So I've, I've seen a ton of models where that's happened, and it's all because of the split gears. Um, you know, they're not like that right out of the box, or at least when they were brand new, so... It does uh, play a role in it. Nerf Cat doing okay? Yeah, Nerf Kitty's uh, doing fine. He was walking around the house earlier, bossing us around. Uh, he's getting old. He can't really hear anymore, but uh, he's still going. Do you live in your basement? No, I, I live upstairs. I mean, in terms of the amount of time I spend down here, I guess you could argue I do live down here, but... Hi, SMT. I have a bunch of HO scale track and switches, other things I think you would like, but I don't know how to mail it to you. Hope you enjoy. Well, uh, uh, thank you so much for the offer. I already have a ton of spare track, so I don't want to be taking it away from you if, you know, I've already got some. 
Hey, Harrison, do you still have the Chesapeake and on fire Varney locomotive? Don't need to see it run, just curious on its current condition. Uh, I'm glad you asked. Yeah, I still own that locomotive and uh, it is still in working order. I was running it in a previous live stream and um, it was doing some funny things. The current draw was really high, but um, it was still running. I was pulling cars with it, so that engine despite how bad that motor is just uh, refuses to give up the ghost it really is a testament to just how tough old varney engines are i mean i i don't think the original owner put a lick of oil in that thing <laughs> chris danielle lol you do live in your basement <laughs> I think a lot of track back in the 50s was hand laid. It's possible. I don't know uh, when Atlas came out with its first iteration of track. I feel like it was around then. But that's the thing I find uh, really fascinating about a lot of stuff from the 50s is like a lot of it was scratch built and stuff. You know, the, the creativity was definitely, uh, I think, a bigger role than it is. Today, I mean, there was a lot of creativity put into most layouts, but, you know, having to build a building out of a kit rather than just, you know, buy it whole is, you know, definitely a lot less complicated. Harrison, we bought something that we called Kids in Wine. I have a shock glass next to it. What the heck? What's the best plan for your street running if you can run an engine down a Jeeva or something? It'd be neat. Well, this isn't, uh, I think the wires connected to it are not working right now, but uh, yeah, I just put plaster beside the rails. Anyways, let's try to get the uh, Centennial on. I'm going to try not to uh, forget the switches this time and go derailing the whole train. When you're not making a video, what do you do for fun? And what's your favorite hockey team? Uh, my favorite hockey team is the Ottawa Senators. I mean, I'm not big into hockey, but still, it's uh, it's the Sens. And uh, as for uh, other hobbies, um, in the summer months, I'm uh, pretty big into uh, boats. I've got a classic car, which I sometimes wrench on. I uh, love buying old outboard motors and trying to fix those. Uh, into uh, horseback riding a little bit. Uh, what else? And uh, economics. I, I don't think very many people would find that a terribly exciting hobby, but uh, I do for whatever reason. But uh, a lot of the time when I'm not, uh, you know, filming videos, I'm working on the layout, doing repairs and stuff. And, you know, once in a while, I'll just come down here and uh, listen to a podcast and work on an old piece of equipment, kind of like this old uh, unit here. Going off the rails on a crazy train, Ozzy Osbourne. That's a good song. Do you have a j day job? Not uh, currently. Um, I, I, I'm self-employed in that, you know, I buy old motors, old boat motors, and part them out. Um, when, the, when the block is destroyed, you know, you can just part out the motor because uh, those are worth a lot of money. You can, you know, get some real cash for them, so... Um, yeah, I kind of just sell boat parts as sort of a, a side gig, but uh, that's about it for the time being. What did them friends and family th son think of the layout? Uh, apparently they love it. I, I wasn't the one who actually delivered it. Uh, their father came by here one day. He had to rent a van, and, and they live like uh, an hour away, so he drove it out there, and I kind of gave him some instructions on how to set it up. Uh, but he sent me a picture of uh, his kids uh, messing around with the layout. Apparently they've been having a lot of fun, so uh, I'm quite happy about that, you know, after all the time and energy that was put into building that.
You should do a video on wiring. Yeah, a lot of people have uh, suggested that. How come you never run trains on the left side? Well, I've started uh, just a few minutes ago. I was actually running some uh, trains down this way. It's just a uh, much dodgier part of the layout. Like this part has 22 radius curves over here. It's all 18 radius and you've got all these different gradients. So uh, some engines are fine on this layout. Others have some issues and I'm slowly ironing out problems with it, but it, it's never gonna be perfect. That's for sure. Do you have a Mahano 2102? Yeah, I was uh, running it earlier in the live stream, actually. I think the circus is my favorite part of the layout. What a cool find. Yeah, it blends in so nicely too. Like I find it's kind of hard to tell this was a separate part of the layout at one point. And uh, I, I think the price for this whole section was 30 bucks or something. Like the, the shop owner really um, was selling that at a discount. I'm glad he was because the second I saw this thing, uh, I knew that I wanted to purchase it. What UK trains do you have? Uh, I've got the Flying Scotsman, got an Intercity 125. What else? I was, I was sent a whole bunch uh, not too long ago, actually. I'd have to look through. Waffle House, yeah. yeah. The, when the Forest Fair Mall gets built, that's gonna have to be uh, relocated. Would you ever do a Q&A or something like that? Um, yeah, maybe at some point. I mean, I kind of consider these live streams uh, a bit of a QA. and a um, You know, if people want to ask questions about the layout or, you know, really anything, I'll try my best to answer. But yeah, it would be good to do a specific Q&A. That way I could actually focus on the questions a little more and not if the trains are derailing. I think I'm just going to carry the LRC car over. Also have to uh, finish this live stream in uh, about 20 minutes so it can start the uh, premiere. So I'll run a couple more and then I think we'll call it a night there. The house on the hill looks haunted. Well, uh, I, I can't remember the manufacturer. It's northern something, I don't know, but uh, the rumors going around is that they designed this place to look like the house from the Adams family, but they couldn't get the rights to build that house. So they basically took features from the house and then they moved them all around. That way they could avoid the copyright problem. And uh, so you can kind of see that influence. I mean, I also uh, added a lot to make it look even worse, but I think it's kind of cool. Like uh, a haunted mansion on, on top of a hill. An old uh, Cadillac sitting out front and uh, a really sketchy looking, you know, wooden ramp to get to it. What are your opinions on the relatively new Kansas City uh, merger livery? It kind of looks like 777. It's not horrible, but I feel like they could do something better. It's a little too minimalist for uh, my taste. Years ago when there were rumors of this merger happening, there was some guy on my Discord server at the time who made a let's say a fantasy design of, of what it could look like. And his version was way better than I think what they're coming up with. I 
One of these days you need to do a live stream where you attempt to run all your engines. That would be cool. Hey, SMT, can you run your cursed locomotive that you bought from eBay? It was the one in the uh, manual. I have to turn the light off and off. It was brass. Cursed locomotive I bought on eBay. The one I uh, worked on recently? Sure. I'll, uh, I'll run that quickly. We'll run the LRC, and then I think that will probably be the uh, last train of the night because uh, we're starting to run out of time before that premiere starts. So I'll just take this off. Whoops. Congrats on 150 SMT. Can you run your favorite locomotive? Uh, I think for the purposes of time savings, I won't be able to tonight, but I'd be happy to in another stream. I mean, I already ran the uh, Swedish E2, which is one of my favorites, so technically it's been done. What is the premiere? It's a uh, premiere of um, a video I did about going to New York. And it's uh, also coupled with the uh, giveaway of uh, a couple of Rapido locomotives, so. Should be interesting. Yeah, it's a trip to New York, or go to a train store, go to Grand Central Station, and uh, yeah, then, then do a giveaway. What's your favorite European model manufacturer? Does River Rossi count? I think River Rossi would count because uh, it's owned by Hornby, which is British. I don't know if Italy is part of Europe. Need to get back into geography, I guess. Oh, the uh, coupler seems to be gone on the uh, cursed engine. <laughs> it's still running well, though. Yeah, big big fan of uh, River Rossi. I mean, this thing is a perfect example of just how well made River Rossi locomotives are. I mean, like I just put I put paint on this, and it already wasn't running right before that because the previous owner took terrible care of it. And uh, those River Rossi motors are just so tough; it uh, it hasn't given up the ghost. How do you feel about the Santa Fe SUV? I don't know. Uh, it's okay looking. I don't know if I'd buy one myself. It might. Die. I'm not really a f huge fan of SUVs. I mean, uh, people can drive whatever they want, but uh, I like sedans more. cockroach locomotive pretty much yeah that'd be a good way to describe it it's kind of ugly but it has survived a lot are you using your phone to control the track not right now i do have a uh, wi-fi module connected to the digitrax controller so i can um wirelessly uh, control trains but um, at the moment i'm just running it off the uh, dc controller what was your first car? It was a uh, Volkswagen uh, TDI. It was a diesel Golf. Need to replace the uh, couplers on these cars. They're having so many problems. What's the favorite locomotive in your collection? Asking because you said there wasn't enough time to run it. Well, my all-time favorite is the uh, River Rossi Hiawatha, but uh, a close second is the Swedish E2.
See if the uh, Riverasi car, or not the Riverasi, the Rapido cars can uh, handle the mountain layout. Sounds like something's already derailed. Oh, that didn't go so well. I managed to run those cars onto this section of the track the other day without a problem, so I'm surprised uh, they haven't even made it past the first part of the layout. They probably derailed right in the tunnel, too. Yeah, just my luck. Uh, will it handle the 18 radius curves? <laughs> oh, it is not loving it. Okay, so what we've learned today is the LRC cars are, are not, a, not a good blend with uh, this part of the layout. If you can believe it, the uh, bi-level cars can go through here. I ran them through by accident, and uh, they were fine, so uh, that's interesting. And uh, I also recently uh, shimmed up this section of the track. Some, including myself, believed it couldn't be done, but uh, I, I removed one of the beams, and uh, that seemed to fix it, so pretty happy about that. Try to get these LRC cars out of the tunnel before the engine comes back and hits them. Man, no luck. <laughs> Do you still have the Acela? Yeah, I've still got the Acela and it's uh, still running too. Look how far the LRC got in the tunnel. Okay, it wasn't that bad. Hershey Factory looks great. Thank you. How wide is the layout? It's uh, four feet wide most, most of the way around. Turn off the camera, it will run better. It seems to be the case. I, I Sometimes, you know, while I'm working on something, I'll have trains running just like this, but I'm not switching them out. And they'll run for like an hour straight, not a single derailment. And then the, the second I'm trying to film a video or I'm running a live stream, all uh, chaos breaks loose. You need to make a Gomez train for crashes. That's a good idea. I'll, I'll try, to, try to run those by levels through. Still got like 10 minutes. Okay. It's camera shy, yeah. you think about it, model trains are trying to let you go viral by making it easy to record a live derailment. That's a good point, you know? You do see some of these uh, channels on YouTube and they do model train uh, derailment videos and they get like 1.2 million views. So, uh, you know, maybe this is just un, uh, untapped content. I want to bring this up simply to help anyone having issues with models. Discord and model railroading forms are a great place to look if you need help with an issue or have a general question. Absolutely. Harrison, I don't think 
be to a track, but I have a 40 year old turbo train. If you think it might be a good repair, I'd like to run it if the mail, if you do. I actually have a, uh, a turbo, turbo train. It's never been uh, shown on the channel. In fact, it doesn't work, but one of these days I'm gonna have to do a video of uh, setting it up and trying to run it. So I know a lot of people are very nostalgic about the uh, turbo train. Is there a secret door behind that shelf of model trains? I wish there was. That would be great if there was uh, more space, but no, it's just a cement wall. Okay. I really hope this uh, goes through without a hitch. Otherwise, I think people are going to start to think I'm making stuff up about running uh, full-size passenger trains through the mountain layout. Does running trains cost more on electricity bills? I mean, not really. They, they don't use a whole lot of power. Running this whole, uh, you know, layout with all the lights and stuff, they, those probably do use quite a bit of electricity because they're 50-watt bulbs. But no, the, the transformer... You know, most model trains run on like a, a fourth of an amp, like virtually nothing. <laughs> uh oh. Well, part of the train made it through, but uh, something something bad happened here. Let's see. I've got uh, six more minutes before I need to end the live stream. Let's see if I can get the rest of those cars to to run through. Right now, it is not looking good for Team SMT Mainline. The layout is winning. Half the passengers are going to be late. Yeah. They didn't derail, though. The Just the crappy Bachman couplers let go. What I'm gonna do this time is really give it the beans and then the momentum will, will probably uh, keep them connected together. Or we'll have a really catastrophic derailment, one or the other. This is either gonna be one of the most glorious moments on the channel or another failure for the books. Let's find out. Okay, all the marbles. Ah, <laughs> yes, serenity. Okay, you know, if it makes it through for two, I'll be happy. But, but frankly, the fact it's done it once at least at least it proves that this is not impossible. Oh yeah, okay. I, I think this I think it's found its rhythm here. What's your opinion on uh, Kato? I like them. Uh, I think they make pretty good products. I I am going to be doing a review on uh, their um P42s, which I've actually already worked on one and and I have some different thoughts on that, but um yeah, other than that, I'm I'm pretty happy with any, everything I bought from them. You know, a lot of people uh, complain that Atherin products are not that great anymore, and, and I agree they're not the greatest innovator, but it is pretty remarkable that these bi-level cars can weave, you know, through all these really sharp corners and stuff and do it, versus, you know, the Rapido cars, which, you know, couldn't even make it through those wide throw switches.
For a first time HO scale layout, is it necessary to have foam over the, over the plywood? No, you can build a layout directly on uh, plywood. It's just going to be a lot harder to get the nails in and stuff. And the, the plywood itself can create some funny issues because it can warp and it's not perfectly even. But um, no, if, you, if, if all you have is a piece of plywood, this layout was built only on plywood. And even some of these new sections were. It does work. It's just tricky. Anyways, got uh, two minutes left uh, in the live stream before the premiere. Uh, for anybody who wasn't here before, basically, uh, it should be a live redirect over there. I'll be uh, on there too, so I'll check in and see if it works. But I think I'll end it off in a moment here. So if you have any final questions, I'll try to quickly answer them. You should try to make a secret room behind this shelf. In the room, there could be a single pillar with your Hiawatha locomotive sitting in a glass case. That would be nice. Peter Wacko, I did a crash video at my club and they told me to take it down. I put it back up. Ah, uh, that's it. <laughs> don't 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 cave into the peer pressure. <laughs> I have a bone to pick with you, SMT. You convinced me to buy a model train and now my life has been consumed by this hobby and now my wallet hates me. <laughs> I, I, I have the same problem too. You should check out the Bachman Overland Limited set. The locomotive is great, but I'd remove the smoke unit. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've owned some of those similar large Bachman engines, and uh, they've given me nothing but problems. They look beautiful, though. I'll, I'll give Bachman credit for that. Did you modify those Athern cars? How are they still on the tracks? No, that, that's the crazy part. Like, these, these are stock. I didn't do anything to them. I mean, I've changed the couplers, but I, I changed them with crappy Bachman couplers, so that's not really the case. I, I think they're just a good design. They even worked when I had uh, 18 radius curves on the layout, so... Um, is Atherton an innovator? Probably not, but they, they did a damn good job with these cars, I gotta say. <laughs> Controller Packers, how are we doing tonight? Well, I'm actually just finishing off the live stream to uh, start a premiere, so um, yeah, I'll see you all over there. Thank you all uh, so much for uh, joining in this evening, everyone.